Welcome to TFR Let's Talk. I'm your host, Dr. Bharat, and my next guest is once again, Keith Bessel. Uh, in a new capacity this time, as a Vice President of Product uh, Cloud Native Infrastructure at SUSE. Keith, it's great to have you back on the show. Swap, it's always good to be on your show. Thanks for uh, having us again. Uh, I miss uh, the physical interaction that we uh, I have enjoyed at SUSACon for almost a decade now, uh, but uh, you know uh, this is what it is. So, so uh, the the conference is there. Uh, tell me a bit about uh, what kind of announcement did you make? We have made quite a few announcements. Um, you know, some announcements around Linux are this idea of binary compatibility against uh, from OpenSUSE to the SLE uh, versions of uh, SUSE's Linux offerings. Um, that's really powerful. It allows, uh, you know, swapping back and forth between production and, and testing and all kinds of uh, use cases that uh, there's value in, in that capability. We also announced um, one thing that's dear, near and dear to my heart, which is the SUSE Edge. So we've been working on that for quite a while and uh, lots of cool things there to, to talk about if you wanna go a little bit further there. And we also positioned ourselves um, for what we call SUSE Hybrid IT. Um, when Rancher came together with SUSE, we realized that we had a lot of assets on the table collectively. And so this notion of hybrid IT allows us to tell a very great product story um, as we go from traditional use cases, addressing those all the way to the cloud native um, use cases uh, that are more greenfield opportunities. So we have uh, a lot of options, uh, great value to mix and match to provide solutions across that entire spectrum. So if I ask you from SUSE's perspective, how do you define edge or what aspect of edge makes sense for SUSE? One thing that we tend to do is set a baseline for defining the edge, right? Um, the, the data center edge that you described, we would classify that as a near edge segment because it's closer to the centralized services on the left hand side, right? And so as you get closer and closer to the customer premises, you run into what we call the far edge, which is on the other side of the access device, right? And so that's typically customer prem, uh, customer managed hardware, customer managed network space, and you know, applications there. Uh, the tiny edge, as you, as you mentioned, is all of the industrial IoT devices that are within that far edge segment. And um, we think that SUSE has solutions that can fit all three of those segments. Uh, the only differentiation there is the, the maturity of the solution that's targeted to each one of those segments, right? So for example, the tiny edge is very new. There's an upstream project uh, that is addressing that and we're diving into that upstream community to accelerate, for example, the maturation of some of the industrial IoT uh, IoT protocol uh, coverage. When you talk about uh, the far edge or uh, small IoT devices, uh, Kubernetes is also playing a very big role because you have to orchestrate all those. You know, so I'll just you know talk about all three in separately. Uh, SUSE has uh, I don't know if the name changed micro OS, and then you know from Rancher, you know uh, K3s also came from there. So can you talk about specifically uh, how ready SUSE already is for those use cases? We're very ready, and let me tell you why we're very ready. Uh, so within the far edge, particularly in that one segment, which is the most diverse, the most prolific, the law of large numbers is kicking in <clears throat> strong there. So it's it's very attractive and a very exciting uh, segment of the edge to be a part of. So I believe that you need a minimum of three things to win in that space. The first one, uh, to your point about using Kubernetes, is a lightweight Kubernetes distribution that can be deployed on resource constrained hardware. So that's a win. And not only resource constrained hardware, but multiple architectures of, of hardware. So either ARM or Intel, for example. So K3S, as you mentioned, is a great fit for that one layer. So that's pillar number one. The second pillar is what you alluded to, what we call SLE Micro. Um, we have a variant called SLE Micro for Rancher, which is in the lightweight operating system uh, that you know, Kubernetes has to run on, obviously. And um, it is designed to be immutable, it's designed uh, to be container optimized with a low security footprint from an attack perspective. So that's great because at the edge, the security vectors are very different than in that data center that you mentioned at the top of the call. So those are two pillars. The third and final pillar due to the law of large numbers is this notion of scale, right? So Kubernetes in the past has been complex to stand up and deploy. And then once you have these number of, um, uh, edge deployments under management, it, it's a multiplier in terms of a challenge. And so something like Rancher as a very strong management piece of the puzzle is the third pillar. And that gives us a very strong 
a solution and a right to win, frankly, in this space. What about security? Because security is also critical, especially when we talk about edge and all those use cases are moving away. Um, you talked about, you know, SLE Micro, you talked about K3S. What about security? How, how concerned are you? Very concerned with security. Um, and it's one of the core uh, feature themes or value themes that we tend to bake into our edge solutions. So again, what's happening is that we're taking traditional compute and storage resources and pushing them far out outside of the heart and data center. So our security posture has to be very different. So that can translate into various implementations or forms of security. But um, on one extreme, you've got TPM, TPM enabled our hardware to establish a hardware root of trust. And then you kind of cryptographically sign and bring that security and that trust and that attestation into higher layers of the stack, number one. Uh, going from the other direction, you can harden Kubernetes, you can harden your applications, and you can harden the actual operating system that's running, which is why the Sleep Micro thing was a, a, a big part of the solution as one of the main pillars. So for example, Sleep Micro uh, comes out of the box with SE Linux, right? So we can do strong SE Linux policies to fully compartmentalize uh, some of the processes and containers that are running on that operating system. We have seen the evolution of uh, the roles you know, from developers to DevOps to DevSecOps. We talk about SREs. We are also talking about everything is infrastructure as a code. When we talk about uh, edge, what is happening is that uh, a user end up also dealing with hardware. You can, you know, you're actually dealing with the edge devices which are there and a lot of challenges come with it because they are deployed in remote, remote location. You cannot send your team there. They have their own latency issues. They have connectivity issues. So do you also see that <laughs> uh, if it is already not uh, too bloated that you know hardware will also move into the roles of developers because they you you do will have to learn to deal with bare metal. It's a challenge, right? And so, and, and to make it even to make the challenge even harder. Some of these devices, you cannot manage them out of band, right? So they don't have a BMC interface or, you know, ILO or drive or anything like that or IPMI. So uh, the bootstrap software that you deploy at, at build time, right? So this is why the build process, your supply chain, the bill of materials and who your vendors are in that, in that part of the world need to be very important. Um, one thing that I have a vision for eventually is to make it so easy to deploy these remote lo uh, edge locations where basically just, just walk with, with me for a second. Hardware shows up at a remote location, you unbox it, there's a fold out, it says, here's where you plug in the power, here's where you plug in the network, and oh, by the way, hit the on button. And that's it, right? So from that experience, I, I, I see this vision of this machine coming up, bootstrapping securely, phoning home to something like Rancher and Fleet, uh, Rancher uh, verifying, the, doing attestation of the hardware so it's not been tampered with in, in transit. And then we start to securely bootstrap that software into a working Kubernetes cluster. That to me is a really cool scenario. And it's one that I'd love to see materialize in the future. And I think we have the pieces and parts to do that. Can you talk about what kind of discussions or what kind of themes you saw or heard or talked about at the EdgeWord keynote there? Um, quite a few. So um, if, if you've watched the keynote uh, around Edge with myself and Dr. T, you, you would notice that uh, two of our guests were from the DOD and the intelligence community world, right? So um, I, I'm kind of friendly in that space, uh, ran, ran into circles uh, previously. And the use cases there, I think, are the most exciting. I mean, when you think about the idea of putting uh, Kubernetes clusters on satellites uh, in space, that, that's, a, that's a thing, right? Um, there's also some ground and uh, like naval use cases that are really strong. So it's across the board in terms of diversity. Uh, I, I really liked uh, the way uh, both um, uh, Key Lee and uh, Ken Kato talked about the speed of relevance, right? And so you mentioned something earlier about Kubernetes is kind of driving the edge. Well, what's happening there is that this speed of relevance is being enabled by the standardization of Kubernetes everywhere. And so I, I just love that. And, and it's a great place to be and a great time to be in the tech space and implementing these solutions. When we talk about cloud, we talk about multi-cloud, we talk about hybrid cloud. Uh, Let's start talking about Edge into also into that story, you know. So uh, there is a SUSE Edge plus hybrid IT story. So so how do you, you know, uh, uh, first of all, tell that story, build that story, and, and just the way we talk about, hey, we live in a multi-cloud hybrid cloud world, so will Edge also become part of this story? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the hybridization, uh, when I say hybrid, I am meaning distinct architectures and approaches to delivering applications, just to be clear. Uh, some people talk about hybrid cloud 
when they're all using a, you know Kubernetes everywhere. There's nothing hybrid about the, the Kubernetes API, right? It's a CNCF standard. So that always baffles me when people would say hybrid when they're talking in the context of Kubernetes. Anyway, back back to your question. Um, so the 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 real um, question starts with the application, right? So uh, if you think of a, a process to triage what the solution should look like, you start with the app. You ask your, your customer, are you cloud native today? And many times the answer is no. So that puts you on one branch of the process where you need to bring classic virtual machine solutions or bare metal management solutions to the table. And, and again, with, with the com combination of SUSE and Rancher, we have solutions out of, on, you know, off the shelf today that can solve for both of those in terms of scaled management at the edge. So many of our customers are not cloud native today, but they want to get there from a greenfield uh, perspective, but they can take advantage of things like SUSE Manager um, to, do, to manage the operating system and roll out you know, patches and upgrades and things like that, uh, and as well as managing bare metal. And then the applications can run on top of that infrastructure as well. So that, that's a great thing in terms of being hybrid. And it, again, just to recap, it starts with the application readiness to be either cloud native or be classic and, or traditional. If I'm not wrong, during the conference, you folks also announced something called SUSE BCI. Uh, tell me, first of all, what is it all about? And second is that, how does it fit in the edge story? Yeah, so the full name is uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise Base Containment Container Image, so SLE BCI. Um, what that is, it's a, a base image offering designed to target uh, developers in the space. So developers need a base image to build their applications on, and we think Sleep BCI in various uh, offerings or flavors, if you will, will be a great choice for that. Um, we're seeing a lot of demand, uh, particularly going back to our DoD uh, conversation, where um, there's some very secure deployments that need to happen, and we want to strengthen uh, the security profile of the container image itself, the, the overall container, and it starts with that base image. So. Um, we have some cool things in the works around like a hardened uh, base container image that developers can just embrace and build on. So that's number one. We're also undertaking a, um, a refactoring, if you will, of some of the rancher core containers uh, to be refactored on top of Sleep BCI. And so that's going to allow us to be faster in responding to things like CVEs uh, or updating the software. And also it builds on uh, SUSE's Linux um, very strong um, supply chain, right? In terms of signing throughout the entire process. So lots of cool things that you'll see uh, with Sleep BCI when it becomes available. What kind of adoption for Edge you are seeing in this space? You already mentioned you know, some, 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 some use cases for DRD, or, but uh, first of all, how much adoption do you see? And second is that, where do you see the market is heading with uh, with edge you know adoption is is been strong um i can't give you any specific numbers or anything uh mostly in the in the product management space but um adoption is strong the diversity of use cases is very strong one of the big drivers for the future is uh, something i alluded to earlier called the law of large numbers so what we're seeing when we see these opportunities we evaluate these opportunities we build architectures for these opportunities they are at the numbers of like low 10,000s to and higher, right? So imagine, you know, 10,000 remote downstream Kubernetes clusters under management. And so that that's a challenge and we're ready to meet that challenge, but let's take that even further. So let's say each one of those locations had, you know, five to 600 to 1,000 industrial IoT devices. And then you just get this explosion of objects under management, right? And so I think that uh, the future of edge is one in which meeting that large number challenge is going to be core to anybody's solution out there. And I think with Rancher uh, and Fleet giving, giving us that scale uh, leverage and K3S and then, you know, projects like Aukri upstream with Microsoft, we're going to be very well positioned to meet uh, the future trends and the challenge and, and uh, support our customers through innovation uh, as they adopt their edge solutions.